what's up everybody happy thursday hope all you're having a great day so far today getting into this episode of gh um i don't know what's up with this hook killer storyline but i'm trying to put the pieces together I'm, I'm sitting over here trying to play fucking alex cross right now trying to play dr cross trying to figure out who this killer could be because this shit is going in so many it's just zigzagging it's going in so many different directions i'm just like who is this killer because mac and dante done got a lead and it leads them right to Ryan Chamberlain. Um, mind you, Heather and Ryan are funny as shit. Like, she done put this man in a whole Santa hat, a beard. Then she gonna dress him up as Rudolph, put antlers on him and a red nose. <laughs> Yo, Ryan was looking at her. Every time she had put a new outfit on him, a new beard or whatever, Ryan looked at her like he was about to snap her little neck. Like, he was like, you don't get this shit off of me. <laughs> He looking at her like the way he looked at her is like, listen, one, get this shit off of me. Two, do it look like I'm in a festive mood? Like, get, get. <laughs> yo, Ryan and Heather are fucking hilarious. They are funny as shit together. Like, oh my god, that whole scene just had me in tears. Um, but yeah, I'm like, this whole thing is just loony at this point because the earring that they found in Rory's pocket. They got DNA from that earring. And the DNA was shocking because the DNA in that earring belongs to Ryan Chamberlain's dead ex-wife that he murdered 30 years ago. So when they said that, I'm like, wait a minute. How is that possible? That's what I'm confused about. How? how? So... They go to see Ryan at Spring Ridge, and they're telling Heather to get away from him. Do she know who that is? He dangerous. Heather say, yeah, I know who this is. <laughs> y'all don't know who that is. Little do y'all know. Yeah, y'all know him as Ryan Chamberlain, but little do y'all know that's her baby daddy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Y'all just don't know that yet. Um. So they were trying to ask Ryan all these questions about the earring and how is it that it got his dead ex-wife's DNA on it. And Ryan was just sitting there the whole time, you know, talking through Heather or whatever, basically saying no Ava, no information. Because <laughs> he was like, listen, I ain't saying nothing to y'all if Ava not sitting here. You know, Ava not sitting here, I ain't got nothing to talk about with y'all. Um, I don't know why. Them going there was just a waste of time because they literally did not get no information out of Ryan about this. So after they left. You know, Ryan grabbed Heather's uh, wrist or whatever, and he was like, that earring was on a chain that she stole from him. And he realized that she still has that. So my whole thing is something ain't adding up here because there's no way Ryan, Heather, or Esme could be the hook. There's no fucking way. Because... When Rory was killed, Esme was trapped in the tower. She was locked in there. There's no way she got out. And if she did get out, why would she go back to Windermere? Why would she sneak back in? You know what I'm saying? When she knows that Nicholas is probably going to do something to her once that baby is out. So it wouldn't make sense for her to sneak out, sneak back in. You know, sneak out, kill somebody, sneak back in. It, it would be stupid. Um, Heather and Ryan, they're locked up in Spring Ridge. And far as we know, they haven't escaped out unless they one of them somehow got out. But Ryan's reaction to all of this is that he is not a part of this. Like, he's not the hook. Heather, I don't see her being no hook killer. I don't see Heather doing it. You know, Heather is nuts, but I don't see it. I Well, I ain't going to say I don't see it. It's possible. But for her to sneak out, sneak back in, only way for her to do that is if she got a guard under her thumb. I don't know. All of this shit is confusing. I'm trying to figure out who this killer can be and how does it tie to Ryan Chamberlain's dead ex-wife. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Spencer and Trina come up with this brilliant idea to lure Esme out because they want her caught. And I'm being very sarcastic when I say brilliant because <laughs> this plan is not going to work. Um, so their whole plan is to act like they turn to one another after Rory's death just to piss Esme off and make her, you know, come out, come out of the shadows, you know, lure her out so they can get her. Um, there's a hiccup with that and there's a problem to that because they don't know that she's trapped in the tower at Windermere. So even if she somehow finds out that they're linking up together, 
there's no way for her to escape and try to come after them. So that that plan is not going to work in that in that retrospect. Um, but again, Trina also she needs to stop blaming herself for Rory dying. Like that man was a cop; he could have died at any given moment. That's a very dangerous profession. Any one of us can go at any moment, no matter what profession we're in. I mean, taking a step out your front door is a, is a risk nowadays. Um, with all this shooting and killing and all this going on. So, I mean, it could happen to anybody. But she needs to stop blaming herself. I Like I said before, I feel like it's more so the guilt. It's her guilt that she um, didn't love him the way that he loved her. And I think that guilt is still eating away at her. Um, I think eventually she'll get over it. She'll move past it. You know, move on with her life, hopefully. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that. Jocelyn's still sitting over here being a little heartless. She over here being a tart, a little hole of the heart. I cannot believe this girl. So naturally, you know, her car gets, you know, run, ran off the road. She slides off the road or whatever. So another car pulls up. Of course, it's Dex. Of course. Why am I not surprised? He was tailing her. Um, You know, so she couldn't get no signal or whatever. So she finally get a signal to call a tow truck to come get her out. And, you know, they all hugged up and stuff trying to keep warm, you know. He trying to give her, her his coat, all this other mess. So they start kissing. And, you know, he keep apologizing to her. And she finally admitted. She was like, listen, stop apologizing to me. She was like, you know, basically, I'm grown. I'm doing what I want to do is pretty much what she's saying. But it's one thing that you still need to do, and that's to call your man. Call Cameron and let him know. Like, I don't like all this canoodling behind folk back. You know what I'm saying? Normally, I do. But not under these circumstances, I don't. Because you got a good dude over here that you playing. And I don't like that because I like Cameron. He, You know, he's a good kid, man. And I feel like he really don't deserve this. Like, you over here lip locking with him. You know? So, Dex, you know, the tow truck finally come and Dex bring her home and whatnot. You know, Carly been over there worried sick. I'm like, not that worried, but worried. Um, And Dex and Jocelyn pretty much can't stop thinking about each other. I can't wait for Cameron to find out about this because I really want to see what his reaction is. Till all of this is going to be. Because I know shit going to hit the fan. One of two things is going to happen. Either he's going to accept this and bow out gracefully. Or he's going to accept it and lash out. One of those is going to happen. Because Jocelyn, I'm like, you playing a, dead, a deadly game over here. I'm like, you need to chillax with that. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Ava decided to bring Avery over to visit with Carly or whatever. Which was nice. You know, before they went to the gingerbread jam or whatever. Um, and I thought that was pretty dope. You know, Carly got Avery some walkie-talkies and stuff like that. I miss walkie-talkies. I haven't had walkie-talkies probably since I was 10. I used to love me some walkie-talkies. Oh, my goodness. That was my shit. I remember I got it for, I think, my 10th birthday. I used to love them. Um, I need to get some. I need to get another one. I didn't even know they still made walkie-talkies. That's how, like, I, that, I haven't really seen them or been paying attention. I know Walmart still got them, I believe. Um... But I think I used to get mine. Where did I used to get mine from? Radio Shack. Back when Radio Shack was open. I'm old. Y'all y'all, y'all remember Radio Shack? See, these kids today don't know about Radio Shack. <laughs> they don't know about that. That's old school. They don't know nothing about that. Radio Shack, Blockbuster, Tommy K's videos. They don't know nothing. These kids today don't know. Um, I miss me some Blockbuster. That used to be the shit on a Friday night. Blockbuster and some pizza. Mm, that was my good childhood. So, anyway... I thought it was nice of Carly, you know, to invite Ava in because, you know, Ava was going to go sit her ass in the car. And Carly said, no, you ain't got to go sit in the car. You could come in. You could come chill. So they, you know, they started talking and stuff like that. And she mentioned Nicholas and Ava almost choked on that hot chocolate. <laughs> she almost choked on that shit. Um, you know, and that's when Carly realized, oh, y'all having issues. I'm like, they been having issues since they met, Carly. Where you been? Everything about Nicholas and Ava has been issues since the first day they locked eyes <laughs> and she admitted that you know nicholas been screwing around on her or whatever and even carly was like has nicholas lost his mind like is he crazy like he don't realize what he doing like is he nuts and i'm like apparently carly he nuts i kind of love seeing carly and ava be frenemies i love it a lot has gone down between them that usually is unforgivable to me and i don't think they forgive each other for anything or that they even like each other but they're cordial because they ain't really got no choice but to be you know what I'm saying? So I like I like that good friend of me vibe with them that they could come together and kind of, you know, shoot the shit a little bit, even though they, they really kind of don't fuck with each other. But they fuck with each other in a way when they have to, if that makes sense. I like it. You know, that kind of Dorian Lord 
you know, that Dorian Lord, Vicky Lord kind of beef. You know what I'm saying? Like, where we, we don't, like, we like and hate each other at the same time. Or we cordial and hate each other. You know, shit like that. I, I rock with it. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that. Nicholas was irritating me. Because you know how frustrating it is to watch this grown man sit here and taunt and threaten a girl half his age? Like, that shit is so crazy. Um, like, he was literally sitting there taunting Esme about being alone. Like, oh, you gonna be, oh, you haven't seen loneliness until you get on Cassidy Island. And that's my thing, because he kept telling Elizabeth, oh, when I bring her to Cassidy Island, she gonna live the, the, the lap of luxury. No, she not. I feel like he was just telling, I feel like that was just lip service. He was just telling that to Elizabeth to ease her mind, like, you know, about keeping her there. I feel like he might have her locked up in one of them little cells that Helena used to have loot locked up in. <laughs> I feel like that's exactly what Nicholas is going to do. There's no way in the world he's going to treat her like some little royalty on that island. There is no way. I don't see him doing that. Um, You know, they kept taunting each other, going back and forth and stuff like that. Because she pretty much told Nicholas that the closest thing he got to a companionship this Christmas season is his prisoner. <laughs> I love me some ass, man. I swear, she funny as hell. Yo, the way she was sitting there singing, you know that Jingle Bell song? She remixed the song Jingle Hell. Yo, I love Esme. She is fucking hilarious, bro. Like, having her locked up is the best thing since sliced bread. It's fucked up, but it's funny at the same time. She was like, Jingle Hell. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like it. But Nicholas gonna get his. Like, he really is. I'm actually happy that Chase, you know, came through and he committed to his obligation to sing at the Jingle, uh, the gingerbread jam with blaze and stuff like that um him and blaze killed it i like the song i felt like they did a dope job on the stage and they got good chemistry um i could not stand link like the way link scolded her for her outfit because he was like oh i told you to be santa's dress as santa's mistress and you know the way he dragged her off and stuff like that even BLQ was just disgusted by that. And I was too. Cause I'm like, somebody need to whoop his ass. Because number one, I like that Blaze knows her identity. Like she knows that she doesn't want to be over sexualized and stuff like that. She wants her music to speak for itself. You know, she ain't got to dress slutty to sell a record. You know what I'm saying? And I respect it. Somebody need to take him down. But I am glad that, you know, Chase is still going to work with BLQ to take him down because they're disgusted by him. He's a creep. And as they should, because I would hope somebody would take his ass down. Um, but you know, BLQ was also hoping for more that her and Chase would get back together, but I don't blame Chase in a way. Cause he was just like, nah, nothing more. He said, we're going to take link down. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I can't say I blame him, you know, because the trust between them is pretty much broken at this point. You know what I'm saying? He can't trust her. You know, you, you, once you break that with somebody, it's hard to get it back. Do I think at some point they can reconcile? Yes. I just think it's going to be a little ways off before that happens. But I think them working together to take down Link might bring them back together again. Who knows? But BLQ just need to do better. You know what I'm saying? Act right. Um, I think that's everything with this episode. We pretty much got some Sunny and Sasha scenes and stuff with Nina and little Donna. And they was giving her a candy cane and all that. You know, like little cutesy scenes. That's pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment set. I do like the singing though at the end. The little... You know, everybody coming together and stuff like that. The little monologue at the at the end, the little Montag or whatever. Um, but yeah, everybody hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Have a good night. Peace.